Hello everybody and welcome back. So the first uh, video that we're going to talk about with the causes of war are economic causes. So what are economics? So economics uh, refers to the production and consumption of goods and services that are used to fulfill the needs of those living or operating within that country. So a lot of, of what the causes we're going to talk about today are focused on the acquisition of land, focusing on opening of markets, or hurting other markets um, of other countries. We're, we're going to see a lot of kind of interdynamics of all these different uh, small events uh, and treaties that are all economically driven. For the First World War, if it's short term, the, that means the event occurred after or uh, after or on 1905. So 1905 all the way to 1914, that means it's a short-term cause. Long-term cause means it's anything before 1905. So we're going to see this a lot when it comes down to um, just how far and deep these economic causes uh, are for the First World War. Now, these are the examples we're going to be going over today in, in this video. We're going to talk about the Franco-Prussian War which is a long-term cause between France and Germany, the naval arms race, which is a short-term cause between Britain and Germany, the Triple Entente, which is a short-term cause between Britain, France, and Russia, and then we're going to talk about concepts like militarism and imperialism, which is both long-term and short-term. Now, without further ado, let's talk about our first one. So, the first example of the Franco-Prussian War is a long-term cause and it's a long-term cause because it happens uh, in uh, 1870 and lasts on, all the way until 1871. Now this war was a war between Germany and France and uh, in this war Germany was a, a relatively new nation trying to prove themselves uh, to the European uh, continent, the European region. And so after Germany kind of struggled with with unifying, struggled with coming together, um, they eventually decided the best way that we can make ourselves known is attacking another country. And they choose to attack France because leading up to the Franco-Prussian War, France was very much an, an opponent, very much trying to prevent Germany from growing too much because it was, as you can see on this map, directly next to them. They share a pretty decent border with them. So uh, when they go to this war, the Prussian leader, because at this time Germany was known as the Prussian Empire, um, <clears throat> conducts a full-scale war. Uh, the leader of, the, of Prussia was Otto von Br uh, Bismarck. Now Otto von Bismarck had a very strong impact on uh, what is going to be modern-day Germany. He produces a lot of nas nationalism, pride, uh, ideology and a lot of his philosophies are going to stem into um, Nazism and other things that we that we see later in German history. Now, one of the key things he does is he revolutionizes the military and makes them as advanced as possible by 1870. And so, when he does that, uh, essentially the French army is not ready for this sort of conflict. And eventually, France loses the war. When France loses the war, as a repercussion from it, they had to pay out a lot of money. So, this is an economic cause for two reasons. One, this war caused France to have to pay heavy rations, sorry, heavy reparations for the war on top of losing it. So, not only did they waste money fighting the war, waste money buying supplies and working towards the war, they then had to pay money out to the victor. And right there, we can already see how this is hurting France's economic position, as well as creating a deep hatred. But the hatred that France starts to grow gets even deeper because Germany, as a victor of the war, takes this part of the region that borders Germany and France called Alsace-Lorraine. This region is also an industrial hub, also creates a lot of uh, products and capital. So when Germany takes the Alsace-Lorraine region, 
they are gaining a big industrial area. So not only is this economic because France is paying out and lost a lot of money in the war, but France is also losing an area that produces a lot of money. So from this area, France economically is very set back. And this is going to provide a huge push to try to regain that area eventually and will leave a lasting feeling against Germany that we have to make up for all of the humiliation and also the economic loss that we have here. And so this is going to start a, a trend in France to always be against Germany, no matter the situation. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is the naval arms race. Now, the naval arms race is a short-term cause. It happens in 1905. It's a short-term cause that is a um, production fight between Germany and Britain. These two countries are fighting against each other, not physically, but rather um, in production, in military. And so Germany, being located in the middle of Europe, decides the only way that I can grow as a country, the only way that I can be a uh, larger empire, is colonies. And the only way I can get colonies is by building a strong enough navy, navy that can compete with every other nation the biggest naval empire is britain as you all know britain and the dutch east indies has a massive navy that is dominating uh the entire world they have colonies in every continent of the world at this time so when germany says you know we need to compete and we need to try to to grow our navy this becomes a direct threat to Ger to Britain because Germany is now outwardly saying we're going to build a navy to not only compete with British navy but also put your colonies your markets at a threat because if our navy can build and be bigger and better than yours then we're going to take your colonies which means you're going to make less money and you're going to be less economically powerful but on top of that if we look at this graph here, as Germany starts building their their uh, navy, as we see here in in uh, like the greenish brown, and Britain right here in the red, each of these are dreadnoughts, right? Britain has one, four, six, and then it exponentially grows. As it grows, the thing you need to keep in mind is each one of these uh, battle cruisers, these dreadnoughts cost between 1.7 and 2.5 million dollars at the time germany it's 1.1 to 2.4 so not only uh, is germany threatening the british economic power of their navy by controlling colonies but they're also spending and dumping millions of millions of dollars into building these ships and trying their hardest to just build as fast and as quick as possible. I mean, Germany goes from zero as they start production to four and then to seven. And then if you notice, Germany is always just a little bit behind until we get to here right before the war when things get a little bit um, more spicy. But this is a direct assault, a direct uh, threat to the British Navy, thus threatening their economic power in the world and so this is going to be a major reason why britain decides hey we need to do something about germany and now that germany has essentially aggravated britain and france they want to make an alliance knowing that germany is going to do things even worse and so that's where we get to the uh, next example of economic causes the triple entente now, the Triple Entente is a short-term cause, and um, the thing we need to know about it is that it is between Great Britain, Russia, and uh, France. But an Entente, and what that word means, is it's a friendly understanding or informal alliance between states or factions. What this specific Triple Entente was about 
was that these three countries will not come to the defense of each other, but rather will defend each other's economic markets. Essentially saying, we're not going to go to war with each other. And if Germany attacks you, hey, I'll let you guys handle it out, but I'll make sure Germany doesn't attack any of your colonies. And this entire alliance system is not based off of friendship, is not based off of trust. It is merely based off of defending each other's economic capital. So from the get-go, this alliance isn't really an alliance as most people think. It's all about protecting each other's economic power. And is the main reason why, as we're going to see in the war, that these countries don't really work together. It's mainly you do this, I'll fight on this side, you fight over there, and then we'll work. we're attacking the same person. But at the end of the day, we're not really working together uh, in link until much later on in the war. The next example we're going to talk about is mobilization. This is a long and short term cause. When we look at mobilization, when we look at um, how much money each of these countries spend leading up to the war, we see massive issues. Because as you build up your country, as you build up your army, that costs money. That costs lots and lots of money. Because you not only have to pay the salary of the soldier, you then have to pay for, the, for all of the supplies, food, ammunition, weaponry targets uh, you need to pay for the the uh, land that you're going to be using you need to pay for all of the resources the horses the tanks everything so leading up to a war you need to make sure that you have all of your supplies before the war otherwise you're almost instantly going to be uh, taken out or eventually lose the war because of how behind you are so when we look at the first world war and mobilization leading up to the war these countries are spending billions and billions of dollars that are going into something that they know is going to be wasted at the end of the war you're not going to get this money back this money is gone you've spent it it's done and this graph as you can see here roughly comes out to 100 by today's standard 186 trillion dollars that were spent overall by by all of the countries that fought in the war but if we look at germany which is right here and britain and france the three countries we st talked about the most here britain spent 39 billion the british spent 38 billion the french spent 26 billion economically they've spent an ungodly amount of money before the war even began which means at the end of the war their economies are going to be weakened and they're going to need something to boost it back. And so each of these countries economically are going to push hard to win because look how much money they have on, on the line. Look how much money they've already spent, which is not including everything else we just discussed. Now, the last one, um, this kind of comes down to something I referenced earlier in the introduction video. Imperialism is a long term and short term cause because it is all focused on expansion the more land you have the more colonies you have the more colonies you have the more money you end up making this is just a a very simple cut and dry component however <clears throat> the triple alliance as you will hear in a, in a later video is between germany austria hungary and italy these three countries are all in the middle of europe they are limited on what they can get and how they could grow, which means their economy is always going to be small. It's always going to be stunted. And thus they are going to push for imperialism. They're going to push for expansion because they need to make money. They need to grow their country. And the only way they can do that is with money, which is why the Triple Entente come together and are creating an alliance to protect each other's markets rather than try to get more markets. And so economically, there's a lot of really big pushes for why one half of the war was about gaining money and growing your country, whereas the other half is all about protecting your money and protecting the markets that you have.